The disease of addiction or alcoholism is uh, basically a hijacking by the substance to the reward center of the brain. The consequences are right there. You know, the parole officer said, I'm going to jail. The, the wife or the husband says, I'm being kicked out of the house. I'll never see the kids again. The boss says, you drink again, you're fired. In spite of all these obvious consequences where a rational person would say, I don't want to go to jail. I don't want to lose my marriage. I don't want to lose my home. I don't want to lose my career. You know, I shouldn't drink, you know, but yet they drink. And, and, and this has been shown to be uh, in a part of the brain that we are beginning to understand that it has to do with the prefrontal cortex, which is the executive center of the brain that gives us our rational decision-making process. Oh, if I cross the road now, I might get hit by a bus, or the reason why I get up in the morning when the alarm clock goes off and I don't want to, it's got to go to work and I got to get a paycheck, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That gives me the rational decision-making. That part of the brain is inhibited by the pleasure center and the dopamine response by the continual, chronic, repetitive application of that mood-altering system. So the nucleus accumbens and the ventral tegmental area, those are two parts of the brain that are, to, that are very important to the pleasure center. Those are the parts that are being hijacked. There's an inhibition to the prefrontal cortex, which basically is saying, shut up, don't tell me what to do because we just found the best thing since sliced bread. There's a progressive inhibition of my ability to rationally decide what's best for me in that current moment. This is a medical condition called hypofrontality. In other words, the frontal cortex is losing the ability to keep my instincts, my desires, my impulses in control. And this is seen in irrational behavior, hyperlabile emotions. This is seen in impulsivity. Uh, lack of uh, frustration tolerance. This is seen in symptomatology that we see in medical and psychiatry all the so time. So it's important to understand that we're not just talking about opinions or experience, strength, and hope, all of which you know have their merit, but we're talking about hard scientific evidence that the power of choice is literally diminished because of a neurobiological function of the chronic administration of mood-altering substances to the brain and the effects thereof.